Hi, I'm Tom. Welcome to Maine in the fall. All the colors are, are still pretty much here. And in one of these other videos I'm going to put out this week, we'll, we'll take a little walk down back and I'll show you some more of those colors. Today it's kind of it's kind of dreary out, so I'm going to work in the in the garage on my Cub. I've got a couple of issues with it, and I'll go over those with you in a second. But one of the one of the prime things I want to talk about today is well to start off with. I mean, I got a different truck. This one was my brother's, who, if you remember, passed away in December of last year. And it's just sat in the garage up there, and my sister-in-law finally decided uh, she didn't she didn't want it because it's too big for what she uses. So uh, there's a good market for used F-250s right now. So I took mine down to the local Ford dealership. Uh, I went online and, and saw what, what they're worth, and then I went down and I, I pretty much held fast to what I wanted. And they hemmed and hawed a little bit, but they ended up writing me a check for, for what I wanted for that F-250. And then I came back and, and bought this truck uh, for my sister-in-law and put a big chunk of money on my house because I'd like to get that paid off soon. But regardless, this is just an XL. It's, it's uh, you know, my F-250 was an XLT. It was the extended cab, and it sat up about this high. And uh, I was getting about 10 miles to the gallon with it. And this has the EcoBoost that gets 25. And uh, it's got a lot of power. For what I for what for what it is, and yeah, it's only the single cab. But where it's just the the wife and I now, most of the kids have moved on. Uh, I don't I don't need the extended cab. I'd rather have the eight foot bed. And we've got the Subaru anyway. If we do take the other two boys with us, but regardless, uh, I really like this truck a lot. And you know, one of the great things about it is I can reach over and put stuff in the back and take it out. And uh, my wife's kind of short, so it's pretty easy to get in and out. And the the towing capacity of this truck is, I think it's like at 11,000. So it'll tow anything I want to pull. And the John Deere, I'm, I'm going to keep the John Deere. Uh, I really had a lot of, of uh, inner turmoil going on about it because it was just so big and, and I'm a farm oil guy. But uh, my cousin wanted me to have it and uh, I'm just going to keep it. So, but I'm not going to take it to the fair. I, it's, I think this is, might be a little bit heavy for that. Uh, maybe not, but uh, I'm just going to take the Super C or the, the 140 or the Cub to the fairs. So I don't I don't really have anything to pull. I don't have the big camper anymore. So uh, well, that's so that's one thing. Anyway, I just wanted to show you. I'm getting 25 miles a gallon compared to 10. So pretty happy with it. So now about Cubby, and this looks kind of orange. It's just the light reflecting on it. It's not orange. It's it's IH red, and it's the, the old color IH red that I really like. And I I, uh, I, I know some people, they, they get this newer IH red, and I think that changed maybe early 50s, late 50s. I, I'm not sure. I, I really think it was uh, the early 50s or late 40s. But anyway, it was a little bit lighter red. I think this has more black in it or, or whatever to make it darker. But I really like this deeper red more. So anyway, I've got a couple issues with it that I'm going to resolve. And then I'm really contemplating putting this old girl up for sale because it doesn't have a fast hitch on it and I don't need it. So uh, one of the problems I've got right now, and, and so if I put it in neutral, let me put a block of wood in front of the tire. I'll be right back. I have a couple issues i got to fix. Uh, one of them, you pull the starter, nothing. Even if you come down here to the starter lever, nothing. I took a chance on uh, Amazon and got this starter, and uh, it was like seventy-nine bucks. And then I got a, I have a rebuilt one that I can put back on. And so I think what the issue is, it's not so much the starter doesn't work, but that little copper part that sticks up, it doesn't make good connection with these. Uh, but so anyway, this is Steiner's best right there, and I've got juice here. I've already tested it. So I've got to fix that and I did just change the oil this tractor was fully restored parade ready and by restored I mean whatever was broken was fixed and new rubber put on it when I got it uh, one of the back tires had gone flat and so it had all dry rotted around the bottom and I just I, I drove it like that for a couple of years and then I ended up getting some different rubber and so this rubber right here is really good and I put new rims Actually, the, the back rims are brand new. No, they're not. The new rims are on the other cup. Sorry. Those are good rims, though, and uh, good tires. 
brand new tires and uh, rims here. And the, the rims on these are, if you remember right, the Cubs are, are one piece rims. You can see the fuel in there's it's a good color let me if I can move the, it looks a little yellow but if you really get close to it you can see that it's clear it's just the, the light coming through the window over there i do have a, a flail mower some people call them a flare mower i don't, i'm not sure why but it's a flail mower so i've got all the linkages i've got all the parts i got the belt everything for that to bolt on the swing and draw bar I've got uh, the belt pulley to go on the back, the flat belt pulley. And this currently has the the big pulley on it right now. I think it's a seven inch pulley to run the mower. And so there's the little idlers there and you have to you have to roll that belt for it to go the right way. People will sometimes make the belt not rolled over and it makes the flail mower go this way instead of this way. And that is great if you put like a board in front because you can pulverize leaves or corn stalks or whatever with it. This is a, uh, an upgraded seat. The 48s did not come with these seats. This came off a newer tractor, one of the deluxe tractors, but I, I like this. It's so much more comfortable. And I, I had put all brand new pads on it. But as you can see, that little mousy mouse come out and, and take a chomp on it. Hydraulics work great. It's got... Uh, The new IH cap, a brand new muffler. This is uh, an upgrade. The lights all work, even the jewel, the red jewel on the back. So everything works on this tractor. I just want to go through it and uh, freshen up a couple things. So the, well, the first issue I got to do is, is fix whatever's going on with this. Fix the leak. And the other thing I have that I have to resolve is there's a little choke lever on the back, and it's hard to see, but this little little thing right here, if I come up underneath, maybe you can see it better. See that, that, little, that little lever right there? Well, that's what goes on, and on here, this is just like a little fork-shaped thing that is tapered to go around the, the carburetor choke rod there, but if you tighten it up too much, you, you crack it, and then you get a piece of junk, and they're about 40 We don't want that. Now this carburetor does drip a little bit if you leave the gas on, so I don't. And uh, you know what I so mixed in with a little bit of this oil is uh, is gas. You can smell it because even though I shut the gas off, whatever was in the carburetor ends up dripping out, and it it seems to come out on the side over here. Look, watch. So that's kind of weird that it's coming out the side. Usually it comes out the bottom somewhere. This cork might not be that great, but I had rebuilt this carburetor four or five years ago. That's when I changed this and some other stuff. But this tractor sets most of the time, which is probably the worst thing you can do for anything is just let it sit. They call it lot rot, and it's just deteriorating from sitting around doing nothing. So as much as I love all my old tractors, I just I can't I can't possibly use them enough to do them justice. So I really got to pick and choose what I keep, and I'm keeping this one, which takes up a lot of real estate. But uh, it is what it is. So it's an heirloom. I have to keep the heirloom. So this and the Super C probably are. are, are uh, I know the history of them. Anyway, without further blah 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 out of me, let's see if we can fix the starter first. So here's some of my implements of destruction. I need a 9 sixteenths, 5 eighths, and a Phillips to get that off. Now I've already disconnected the negative battery terminal because we're working in close quarters here and that right there would be hot. And this has uh, dielectric grease on it, so it's not corrosion. I just put this starter in earlier this year. get a socket on the bottom but you can on the top so just use combination wrenches is fine it's not that big of a deal to get this off 
you know it was a good truck but uh, it just it's overkill for what I use now and there's such a huge demand for them so I guess the deal is they're still making all the trucks uh, it's just that you know they they come with whatever features, but the 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 module, the control board, or whatever you want to call it, is not in it. So if you want it to work, you have to bring it back later and have that added. I mean that's what I've been, I've been told. I've also heard that they're just sitting on the lot down there, and I've also been told that uh, they're just not going to make as many. The other big thing that's happening around here, right? Now it's really making me mad as people are stealing catalytic converters off everything. It's ridiculous. I thought I could do this without taking this part off, but it looks like that's not going to happen for me. It's not a biggie. And these, these cub starters, you kind of have to Wiggle them a little bit to get them in and out. They, they fit in good. They don't come out good. So generally what happens with these starters is that this switch goes bad and it happens really, really frequently. And it's not an easy change. You have to take the starter out to get the switch off because the screw on the other side you can't reach. I mean, maybe one of you guys has done it and has an easy way to do it, but I've not experienced that. So put those screws up there. So the way that I can check this is the same way I checked the other one, is with clamps and cables. If you don't have some test leads, you can make them up pretty pretty easily, but I highly recommend having some. They're so they're so useful. So we'll hook our ground up first. It's positive ground. Just connect that there. It should work. And then we'll take our hot, which is negative, there. And if in theory. So it's not the motor. The motor's good. It's that stupid starter switch again. Now there are two different types of these. And some people will say, oh, you gotta get an IH1 or a John Deere one. To be honest, they're mostly the same. So this is the new one. And it's just like the old one. The difference is this one has the spot for the starter lever, lever that comes down and hooks onto it. Now some of the other ones like the John Deere's are a little bit different on this one. There, there are different John Deere ones, of course, but I think it just depends on what model year. But see, now that's making positive connection there, right here to here. I don't know if you can see that real well. But. So this one, it's doing what it's supposed to. So I'll just put a little shine on this. So I can take the new switch and you know the stupid thing that I do all the time is I put this on backwards. I do it all the time. Does it go this way or does it go this way? Well you have to think about it for a second. So you're pulling this. That lever is going back. If that's hooked up there when you pull back it's hooked there and pushes that in. So goes on this way but I, I've definitely put it on that way before and been like why doesn't this work what have I done so this way it's my dielectric grease it's like the end of the toothpaste and there's the old one I'll test that one in a second but I'm going to put a little bit 
up in there. And then this goes like this. So when that comes through, it makes contact just like that. I don't consider myself a mechanic, so whenever I put something back together and it works, it's like I'm just as surprised as anybody else. My brother was a whiz at these things, and he should be so lucky. The problem with cubs is not much room to do anything. Like with the oil pan, there's no room there either. To get those back screws off up in here, really hard to get to. Super C, everything's right there. I like the fast hitch ones much, much better. Everything's just so much easier. I think the fast hitch ones are worth more, especially if you get one with a deluxe seat on it. All right, I'll try to keep my fat head out of the way so that you can see what's going on here. So here's my, my starter. That's my switch. Now with the, the magneto, this has a magneto in it right here, the impulse coupler. All you have on that switch, there's two different kinds of switches. There's one for a distributor, which has a, a two wire, so that you're actually making a connection through. This one right here just has a ground on it. The magneto is the way you, you shut that tractor off is to ground it out. So it's very important that when you order a switch for a tractor that has a magneto that you get the right you get the right one. You want to get the one that is the, it's usually only a one wire switch, if that makes it any easier. I think. I want the battery on first. I only put that one on first because it was on the left, but uh, I'm gonna take that off and put the battery on. So we got that one, and that fits snug over that. A washer, and my nut, and five eighths. You wanna be real careful with this too and just snug it, because I have, made one turn too many on these little cheap things and that'll bust so it's it's just needs to be snug and it's not that the bolt doesn't bust it busts off the other side so just be careful just snug all right I want to clean the battery terminals again There's no good, well, I guess, I think I can get in. I cleaned my, my garage out the other day, and then I promptly filled it back up again. Some people incorrectly run the negative cable. They run it across the floorboards there and then in between, but the right way is underneath the floorboards. And people put stupid prices on tractors right now. I thought... People learn their lesson that people, I don't know. I can just tell you that I've seen some cubs that are pretty rotten, that don't look that great. And they got five or $6,000 on it. There's a, a $6,500 Super C I saw that wasn't, I mean, it was just a Super C with a fast hitch, but it, you know, and it was straight, but it wasn't parade ready or anything. It had some cheek weights on it, but cheek weights are like 600 bucks. And he had two sets of back weights on it, so add another 150. So you're 750. You figure a Super C is worth about, in my mind, about 1,800 bucks, 2,000 tops. So you add the cheek weights on here at 2,600, 150, uh, 2,750 maybe. But he didn't have front wheel weights on it, so take off 150. So about 2,700 bucks, 2,600 bucks max. And that's that's really if you're lucky. That one looks, that one's pretty good. It's a neutral switch on. 
I don't have the gas on, I just want to see if it turns over. Bingo. All right, so it's just the stupid switch. So I'll finish tightening this all down and then I'll be back. All right, sorry about that. It's hard to, to talk and explain what you're doing and also figure out what you're doing at the same time. So what I want is the lever to be on the bottom because I want this to go forward. So in order for that to go forward, the lever has to be in the bottom. Then when you pull back, that chokes it. So choke is fixed, which is great because that makes the screw go this way. And that's where I want it. Yep. So that's, that's correct. All right. Let's see if this will start. I have just been starting it with the crank and it, it actually starts really easily with a hand crank as it should. It really does look orange. So yeah, these, these things are, if they're tuned up right, you can start it with a hand crank, no sweat. So I know there's gas in the bowl. That's on. Give a little choke. Take the choke off. Perfect. Problem solved. I gotta put some air in the tires. I went a little bit slack on me on, over the summer. Cub. Everything works on it the way it's supposed to. The steering is good and tight. It has brand new rims and tires on the front. Four wheel weights, swing and draw bar, 
has the flat belt pulley in addition to the 7 inch pulley for the flail mower. Has the upgraded seat on it, which is off a newer cub with cushions, both armrest and uh, the padded. New battery last year, fresh oil in it, new tune up, plugs, wires, uh, cap, rotor. This is actually a, a magneto, so it's got a different kind of cap on it. I've got the complete 189 plow set. There's nothing missing on it. All the pieces and parts there, depth control levers, the, the eye bolts, all of it is included. Plus the flail mower, which I just took off this year. Excellent treads on the back. Here's the right and left 189 plows. And again, I do have the depth control levers. All the pieces and parts, they're just inside. I didn't put them out here on this pallet, but there's the plows. They're not worn out. They're in good shape. Here's the flail mower. It's not all rotted out. It's all in good sh shape also. Uh, here's your support bar here. All the pieces and parts. Here's your, your lift chain. It goes in the middle. It's not rusted or anything. It's all in good shape. It just fell off the pallet that I had it on. I just used it earlier this year. It works great. All your flails are in good shape under there. Works really well. So known issues with the cub. I'm going to tell you that you might have noticed it does smoke a tiny bit and it just started doing that recently. I put some sea foam in it. I don't know if that'll do anything. I put it in the gas tank. Some people have said that that'll clear it up. I haven't noticed anything, but I've really haven't run it. So I don't know. I don't know what that entails. It runs fine and it's not burning oil. I mean, it's showing it's smoking, but uh, every time I check the dipstick, it's still good. So I just changed the oil and filter in it this summer. Uh, the lights all work. It will drip a little bit and that's pretty common with old tractors anyway. Clutch is really tight. Brakes work. Power takeoff works great. I have the flat belt pulley that goes with it. Swing and draw bar. And I think I have some of the manuals. So I'm going to start at 2250 and I'd be willing to uh, accept offers in person. I don't accept offers over over uh, over the internet without people looking at it. So if you want to make a, an offer on it, you have to come see me face to face and take a look at it, and then we can discuss it. But uh, 1948 Cub restored about 10 years ago, uh, so it was really really nice paint on it. I have used it, so it's dirty, it has some scratches in it, and the wiring is all brand new. I think it's a nice Cub. I just don't need it. So if you want to, uh, you can reach me down below just through Messenger or, or wherever I've got this posted. And you're welcome to come over and take a look at it. And uh, we, we'll go, go from there. Thanks for watching. I'll make a separate video today with the details because this is going up for sale today. Appreciate you watching. I'll talk to you next time.